it's not my fault, that I got into an entanglement. By the way, our four-year relationship, is a hoax. I just used you for appearances. Warning, the following stories are upsetting to cheaters. To others, you found the best place for your vengeful needs. Dad with cheating escapades kicks his son out of the house. But his petty son leaves a generous gift. A personal investigator receives a tip, about a cheating wife. Turns out, it's her stepmom. Next, a boyfriend kept a dark secret for four years, which is worse than his cheating. Followed by a cheater with a double life. In the end, his outrageous lies are manifested into reality. Short but sweet, when a cheating sorority sister crawls back to her sister's lair. She brought something with her. Last story, will leave you with a bad taste in your mouth. Don't forget that you came for revenge. Even if it's from a Dementor's kiss. Tell the like button, it must run faster than Severus Snape, confronted with shampoo. My story is short, but if you aren't fond of cheaters, you'll like it. I'm a broke college student and I pay for my studies myself. I live with my dad. He's always been a cheating deadbeat while I was growing up. We had a deal that I could move in with him and stay until I graduate. But all it took was a new fling from overseas, to have him back out of our deal. This long distance girlfriend is moving in in December, and because my father is a liar, she falsely believes that my room was used by his ex, and that she had since moved out. The truth, is that they were sharing his bed until last week, while I lived in the other room. And so, to keep up the ruse, he told me yesterday that I had two weeks to clear out my room, take my belongings and leave no trace of my existence behind in the apartment. His girlfriend is apparently a clean freak, and my dad is desperate to make a good impression. Hence me getting kicked out. Sure, I'll leave and keep your cheating escapades and lie safe dad, but I won't go, without leaving a present. So right before I leave, there's going to be an accidental spill of tuna juice on the living room rug, and there will be honey and sugar in inconspicuous corners. I think the ants will love it. Hopefully the tuna juice will go bad, and make the whole place slowly stink over the course of several weeks for no reason, and hopefully my dad will be embarrassed and miserable. No, I can't tell his girlfriend, without putting my physical safety on the line, even secret attempts. Otherwise I 100% would, I think what he's doing is awful. My father is purging the apartment and my room when I'm gone, so anything for her to find wouldn't work nor would something that stinks immediately. Yes, my dad's a douche, it's a long established fact. Some will judge me, call it childish or petty. Yes I'm being petty, that's sort of the point. This was the first part, I want to thank many of you for the outpouring of support and, ideas. You guys are diabolical and made me cackle. Makes me feel better about the shitty situation I'm in. Here's the update. This is going to be a bit of a boring update, yet a satisfying one. I moved out like planned. I dumped a bunch of sugar and honey everywhere where my father wouldn't see, and a bunch of veggie parts to rot behind the stove. Decided to not go ahead with the tuna juice in the carpet, because the smell would have been too obvious. I wanted to play the long game and stay petty, instead of going nuclear. My sibling, who doesn't live there and is a lot more confrontational than I am, had a few words of choice with our father about his overwhelming success at fatherhood. I stayed at a friend's when it went down in case it got ugly. Neither of them told me what exactly went down, but I'm glad I wasn't there. I don't know if there were ants, I don't know if there were bugs, I don't know if my dad's girlfriend was disgusted. I haven't been in contact. I know, however, that a cockroach crawled in my father's mouth in broad daylight as he was eating in the living room and that he chewed it and it went crunch. Pregnancy test under the bin bag in the bin. If you can find a positive one all the better. Put it at the back of the cabinet. He'll empty the bins but he probably won't do a full sweep of the cabinets, but you know who would eventually? A clean freak. A positive one in the corner would be insanely hilarious. Spill the tuna juice twice, once where he can see it and once under the sofa, so he constantly cleans the wrong spot and it still stinks. Slices of lemon under the bottom drawers of dressers. As they decompose, they won't stink, but they will attract fruit flies and house flies. And it'll be a massive pain in the ass for them to figure out what's attracting the pests. That's just brilliant. My girlfriend's stepmother was the quintessential evil stepmother. The second her stepmom and dad had children, she got shipped off to boarding school, 
and largely forgotten about by her father's side of the family. Something her father was always remorseful over, but didn't know how to really deal with. Well, my girlfriend grew up and gave up on ever having a relationship with her father, that wasn't ruined by her stepmom. She and I ran a private investigation firm for years, and dealt with cheating spouses on the regular. Neither of us were prepared for this one to fall into our laps though. One morning, while we were getting ready to leave town for a job, she got a message online from some unknown guy asking if she knew a specific woman by name. He used the name of her stepmom. She answered and received another message nearly instantly, stating that the sender was a fireman whose wife had been caught cheating a few months prior, and he couldn't sit by and let someone else cheat without warning others. The night before, he had been driving down an old country road and stopped at two cars, that looked to be broken down to see if they needed help. But by the time he got to the back windows of the car, he realized that something else was going on. Just to be sure, he snapped a few photos, got back in his truck, and ran the license plates of the two cars. He saw, that they both were registered to different last names and different addresses. So it most likely was a cheating couple, and he decided to find the families of the couples and warn them. One of those cars was registered to my girlfriend's stepmom. So he tried to get in contact with her partner, my girlfriend's dad. But he couldn't find him online, so he found what he assumed was the daughter and told her. Y'all, I have never seen someone cry such happy tears in my life. An opportunity to get the ultimate revenge, for all the time she had been kept away from her father, had just been dumped, in her lap by a complete stranger. And while doing it, she would actually get paid for it too. I made her sit on the info for 24 hours, including photos, while we thought it out and gathered a plan. We called her dad up and took him to lunch, warning him that we had some tough issues we needed to talk to him about. When he saw the photos, you could see the relief on his face. Some random stranger had come along and opened up a huge exit door, from what he called an absolutely abusive marriage. We all agreed that more proof was needed, because she would probably want to fight in court, so my girlfriend and I took the case on ourselves and started shadowing her ourselves, legally, of course. We caught her three days in a row before deciding we had enough. Every time it was the same pattern, something my girlfriend's dad said was a regular occurrence that he never realized was her cheating, she was an avid bike rider and would spend hours a day out riding her bike. We picked a day when her stepmom would be coming back from a business trip. And this day, we would start the fun. We got there early, packed everything she owned into boxes, loaded them into a truck, and waited with her father for his wife to come home. The instant she saw a manila envelope in her husband's hands, and a smile on her stepdaughter's face, she knew what was going on and started screaming like a banshee. She yelled, How could you do this to me, you little Calmly, my girlfriend cut her off by saying, Easily, and happily. In the end, she gave up the house and full custody of the kids, so she could go sleep around without worries. None of her kids wanted anything to do with her, and my girlfriend has a great relationship with her dad again. I've seen tons of people stick it to a cheating spouse, but never one that felt as good as my girl, getting her father back from the evil stepmom. The following story, is told from a female perspective. I just found out two days ago, that my boyfriend of four years is actually into men. Our relationship was a lie. He used me to cover his real orientation, because he wasn't ready to expose himself, he told me that himself. He pretended to love me, for four whole years. He acted like the perfect boyfriend for all those years. We were discussing marriage and kids. He even took me to looking at engagement rings. That wasn't all. He wasn't only using me to cover for his real identity. All the while he was manipulating me, he was having an affair with a man. To top all that, his boy toy called me two hours after I walked in on them. Why? To tell me that he was okay with both ways and we could all just be together. Are you kidding me? I don't know if he was making fun of me, or if he was really stupid enough to think that was a good idea. But yeah, that's what happened. If you're gay but act straight, I hate you. What's worse, is that my family believes I should have been nicer to him because... People like him, have it rough enough already. So because of his orientation, I can't be mad? I can't be angry? I need to be nicer? To him? Well, back to the story. After his toy called, I texted my now ex, if he was seriously making fun of me, and he just said. Well, to be fair, it wouldn't be a bad idea. Seriously? This made me lose it. His mom and I were very close, so I texted her a lengthy message explaining what happened and I told her that I can't stay in contact with her, 
at least not for the time being. She was shocked but understanding of why I needed to go no contact. So much so, that his parents disowned him. Not for being gay, but because of what he did to me. How do I know this? The fart face went on social media to complain that his parents disowned him for being gay. Thankfully, multiple family members commented on his post, and exposed him for the crappy human being that he, is. Some of his co-workers had him on Facebook and TikTok, and they saw everything. So his evil deed spilled over to his workspace. Some of those stopped speaking to him because of what he did to me. His friends were disgusted when they found out. His friends always liked me and they're also really big on monogamy, so some of them didn't want to stay friends after they learned the ugly truth. Even worse, his family and friends are advocating for equal rights, so he had no reason to hide from them at all and worse, manipulate me for those years. We lived together, of course we don't anymore, because he had to move out. Did I mention that he can't afford his own place by himself? And due to his budget being tight, he doesn't have many options. There's more. They broke up, permanently. My ex had a fit when his enraged mom called him. In retaliation he broke my TV, my laptop, cut some of the clothes I still had at the apartment, and smashed the coffee machine. So yeah, his boyfriend didn't like his tantrum outburst and he ended things. Before you ask, yes, I am suing him for the damages. This part is an update after my first post. Firstly, I want to start by saying I wrote this post in a state of anger, and I was too emotional to realize how bad it sounded. I do not hate gay people. I have no problems with the community. I'm sorry if I came off that way, I really am not. I was just emotional and hurt, so I would like to apologize if I offended anyone. I understand the community is going through a lot and I didn't want to come out as insensitive. So I'm sorry. Now the actual update. I received some comments and messages from people that advised me to get a restraining order and make sure he can't find me. I unfortunately didn't consider them enough, and as some predicted, he followed me from my best friend's place to the grocery store. When he got the chance, he trashed my car. I'm talking slash tires, broken widows and, what I think is oil, all over my car. Thankfully, the parking lot has cameras and the authorities identified him in no time. He was arrested. I am definitely filing for a restraining order, and I'm looking to move to a different city. I will have to see him again in the courtroom though. Also, his ex-boyfriend agreed to testify that he witnessed my ex, breaking my things at the apartment. My ex is also going to be examined by a professional due to his actions, it appears he may be suffering from some mental illnesses. I've contacted his parents and they are in shock, but they still refuse to have any contact with him. For the people commenting. Please stop asking me if I'm looking for a new boyfriend, I'm not. Just because you are a part of LGBTQ community, doesn't give you the right to cheat, lie or manipulate someone. I don't know why everyone tries to justify their behavior just because they have it tough. Like, I get that it's really hard for them and everything, but that doesn't give you a free pass to be a bad person. Like if this was a straight person, then people would have bashed him or demean him for cheating on you or manipulating you. Being gay is cool and all, but did he really have to make empty promises and waste four years of your life? How can someone recover from stuff like this? Sorry that happened OP. I can't believe your own family said that to you. To basically cut him some slack after everything he did to you? That's outrageous. That's four years of your life that he lied to you, and they expect you to give him a break, as people with his orientation have it rough already? No way that's a valid excuse. So only if he was a straight guy, it would have been okay to make him the bad guy? No, a cheat is still a cheat regardless of orientation. He is a filthy liar and he got exactly what he deserves. He did something really bad and I'm glad that you finally learned the truth. I believe this is his karma. As a gay man myself, I hate these kind of men. It's one thing to hide your orientation if you're in literal danger, like living in North or West Asia. Hell, I'd even understand being with a woman because you don't want to be, as long as he doesn't cheat. But to keep your orientation hidden and then cheat on your partner? No, I don't play that. Also, I'm curious to his boyfriend not even caring about your ex cheating on him, with you? What's up with that? His orientation doesn't matter, he's a human being as everyone else. He lied to you for four years, straight in your face, he cheated on you, he used you and played with your feelings and hurt you so deeply in so many ways. 
So no, it doesn't matter if he's gay or not. Just please get a STI and STD test. I'm feeling for you. I'm getting tested tomorrow. I made an emergency appointment. Following story is told from a female perspective. Firstly, I'm sure this is a fairly basic revenge story, but hopefully the ridiculous context makes it a little spicier. So I'd been with my boyfriend for a year. We'll call him Jay. He was an awesome guy, we had mega chemistry, blah blah. Basically we were disgustingly smitten together from the second we laid eyes on each other. There were a few issues, mainly down to his personal life. The year before, he'd had some sort of breakdown and attempted self-deletion. As he was still with his ex at the time, and they had a baby, social services had become involved, deemed him a vulnerable adult, and imposed various sanctions that meant he couldn't see his child unsupervised. He had to be kept tabs on at all times so his case worker knew whereabouts, plus a lot of difficult stuff. I only found a lot of this out about a month into seeing him, but knowing at this point what a nice, gentle guy he was, just having a really rough time with his mental health, I wanted to be supportive. I could understand why he'd been embarrassed to tell me, he's really not the kind of person you'd expect to ever have a probation officer on his case. Unsurprisingly, this had led to him and his ex splitting, and she now lived with her parents with the baby, and he was left in their home selling it to split. Anyway, back to a year on. We're seeing each other regularly, and he's finally managed to find a buyer for the house, and picked a cute little two-bed really close to my house, so we can start moving forward properly with our relationship. He's getting regular visitation with his son, it seems to be going well. We talk all day every day, spending every minute we can together. He's a little off, and I question it, but he assures me he's just stressed with the incoming move, and a little down from not progressing into more frequent time with his kid. I get it. Until I'm out one, evening, and when my friend is in the bathroom, I scroll through Facebook for a bit. His ex comes up in suggested friends. I've seen her there before, no big deal, but the photo caught my eye this time. It's both of them. Getting married. My friend comes back and I ask her to look up the profile, as my hands have started shaking and I'm afraid I'm going to start liking stuff all over the place. She tells me these photos are from a few days previous, and guests from the event have also posted in the last few days. I ask him super calmly what's going on. And the lies begin. 1. The photos are from their wedding years ago, she's just posting them on their anniversary, to be vindictive. 2. They paid off this wedding years ago, but it was delayed by COVID and kinda had to go through with it to save face. 3. They're not separated yet, but they don't share a room, and their son was taken by social services to live with her parents, because of Jay's mental health issues. I of course don't believe a word of it, and tell him he better tell her fast, because I'm going to be. He descends into total panic, saying it will mess with the social services case and he'll never see his son again. I tell him he doesn't have long left to tell her first. He does tell her, she immediately blocks me, and he starts giving me the victim act, telling me, You were never a side piece. I have to stay with her to have access to my son, I'm everything to him. And more nonsense. It doesn't feel like he's told her the truth. I can't explain it, I just knew he'd made up some sort of lie about me being crazy, to make her block me. The messages are so victim-oriented, it's literally giving me a headache to read them. My lovely and sensible friend, sends a super kind message to the wife, apologizing on my behalf and offering the opportunity to talk, but of course understanding if she doesn't want to. It's, received and ignored. He's still messaging me. The next day, a slightly less sensible, and more vengeful, friend steps in. She contacts a mutual friend of her and the wife, with a few screenshots from me, and asks them if they know what's going on. The mutual responds that it's her best friend's sister, and she'd like to talk to me. So I wind up in conversation with his wife's sister. I send her everything. Photos of us together, screenshots of texts, we piece together where he lied to me about working on his mom's villa, complete with hardware store selfie, but was actually on a family trip, the works. I also send all the proof of his social services stuff. Of course none of it is true. No self-deletion attempt, no social services. But this guy has gone into detail in some, about how he's basically under house arrest, cried to me about missing milestones in his son's life, it's creepy and sane, and just totally unnecessary. Dude, I co-parent myself, why wouldn't you just use that on the days you couldn't see me? The sister is amazing, she tells me they've always thought he was a bit snaky, but just needed the proof. 
goes to collect her sister and nephew because of course, Jay is scrabbling to say anything to make her stay. A couple days later, his wife reaches out to thank me and my friends, and says she's already working on the divorce. I'm honestly humbled by how amazing and brave she's being. He's a fool for doing this to her. The best part? He's literally manifested his story into reality. Since his lies are just so outrageous, it's having to be questioned if he is fit to be around a child. This teamed with an anger streak I've been unaware of, but his sister told me about, and I don't think he'll be getting 50-50 anytime soon. He's disappeared from my life for now, and judging by her family tearing him to bits publicly on social media, I don't think he's got much chance of manipulating her back. But yeah. Don't tell lies, kids. Also he's a Reddit user, so hey Jay, hope you recognize yourself here. Get help, kisses. A little backstory first. My sister got lice a few months ago. It quickly spread throughout my family and I was the only one not to get it. We all decided that we would keep it a secret since the outbreak seemed to be contained. We didn't tell anyone. Not even my girlfriend. Speaking of my girlfriend, after winter break came and went, we had to go back to our respective schools. A week later, I found out from a mutual friend at her school that she was planning on cheating on me. I was heartbroken, angry and confused, and all the emotions that go along with getting cheated on. Well, we broke up after I confronted her about it and we kept no contact for the better part of two months. This past weekend was the weekend that we decided to see each other. We caught up, I gave her things back to her and I was secretly hoping that her life had spiraled downward since we broke up. Unfortunately, it did not. She was really involved in the sorority she was pledging, and was having so much fun at school and everything was amazing. Except for one thing. About a week after we broke up, guess who found out that she got lice? You guessed it. My cheating ex-girlfriend got my sister's lice, and spread it to her entire sorority. Hearing that not only my ex, but her entire skunky sorority, who I had the displeasure of meeting before, got lice from my sister was the best part of my day. I still don't know how I kept from smiling, but I did, and my ex is none the wiser about the whole situation. Maybe not the best revenge story on here, but it definitely made me feel a lot better, and cost me zero effort. Earlier this year, one of my best friends and roommates, Kyle, was dating a gorgeous girl with a reputation for chewing guys left and right. He had really fallen for her, and she genuinely seemed to feel the same way. Talking about how she had changed and never felt this way about other guys before. Since he is one of my best friends, I tried to be unbiased and not have any assumptions about her just because of what other people had said. Our group of friends accepted her and defended her, since she our friend's girl. Until we found out that she had definitely been cheating on him. Multiple times. Our friend was crushed, and the rest of us were understandably pissed. That weekend, our crew of friends headed off to a house party, minus a somewhat heartbroken Kyle. And after we got there, who should appear there, but the girl who had been cheating on him. We ignored her and continued to have a usual fun night, until several hours later we see her in a corner with our seemingly hammered friend Nick. She was flirting with him and getting really touchy-feely. Just as we're starting to worry about what he might do, she leans in to kiss him, and Nick does what has come to be known only as the Dementor's kiss. He tilted sideways. Opened his mouth as wide as possible. Put as much of his mouth over hers as possible, from above her lips almost down to her chin, and just starts sucking inwards while making a noise like a clogged vacuum, sucking up a large slush puppy. After a few shocked seconds that felt like an eternity, she screamed like a banshee vampire in sunlight and ran out of the room, while we alternated between cheering and laughing hysterically. The story made its way around our college, and several people had captured the beautiful moment with pictures. Petty, and she had a new boy toy within a week, but still hilarious at the time it happened. You stayed till the end, which means you're the one I make these episodes for. Thank you for your support, I really appreciate you. Subscribe, so you don't miss out on future episodes and show your vengeful devotion, by tickling the like button without mercy. Do you have any experiences surrounding the topic of this episode? Share yours below, I'll join the conversation. I'll be seeing you, in the next one. Remember that these stories are shared for your entertainment. This content is to be taken as such, and nothing else. Royal AI, rejects advocation or instigation of illegal actions.